In this video, I will show you how to make your own meter map. Hi, in this video, I will show you how to make your own desktop LED meter map from scratch. A meter map will show you the weather at a given airport by changing the color of the LED. VFI is green, for example, marginal VFI is blue, IFI is red, and so on. Enormous credit goes to the guys from LifeSectional.com, who made the software to make this whole project even possible. If you don't want to build it by yourself, I also sell them on PilotMap.co. I will put the link down in the description. This video is very long, so I put an index down in the description as well, so you can jump to the different parts of the video. So let's get started. After editing the video, it turned out to be like two hours long, so I split it in two parts and I put the link to the part number two in the description below. But now, enjoy. Okay, so first we need to go to the FAA website to download the map. You can get it here. And then you scroll down and then you go to the planning tab here and you need to download the VFR wall planning map as a TIFF. This is about 60 megabytes uh, in size and it takes about, I don't know, depending on your uh, internet speed, maybe a couple of minutes. And then after you download it, you need to unpack the TIFF file and open it in your favorite um, picture editor. I will use Photoshop for this. And here we are, this is the map. It's, let me get this bigger here. The whole map of the US. And as you can see, it's just 8.3%, so you can scroll in a little bit. So what I found out in my test is that you can reduce the size to 94% and still have, uh, and the size is still good enough to see all the text and small enough to have like a big area in the 25 by 25 centimeter uh, frame we will use in the, from IKEA. So let's do that first. And first of all, you need to change. Now it's an indexed file and you need to go to, let me shrink this down a little bit. You have to go to image uh, mode and then you change it from index color to um, CMYK. Then just put OK. And now we have to change this also. Double click here and then just OK. And now we can reduce the size to 94%. The easiest way to do this is by Control and T like uh, time. And then you have the width and the height here and then you have clicked the chain symbol here and then you just press 94 and it shrunken 6% and that's it so now we need to get uh, the area we, need, we want to use for the map uh, for the map I'm showing you today i will use the northeast from around here till down here and for that zoom a little bit out and then you go to the selection tool and just select it's like roughly the size you want to cover it's not that important that it's uh, precise here and that's about right. Then you go Control C, Charlie, to copy the file. And then we go to File, New. And then we need a new file. I already have like a, a template here. That's 25 by 25 centimeter. That's based on the uh, picture frame I got from IKEA. If you have another picture frame, you of course need to change the parameters here. And then 300 pixels per inch, CMYK color, 8-bit, 
white background it's all fine and it just create and then just go and click inside this picture and then control victor and there you have it another thing i like to do is get some um what's it called guides here on the side because the frame has a little overhang here and we can use this so to have like uh, a bit of reference we need to add a 10 millimeter frame here that's uh, let me just zoom in a little bit more so that's good from each side and let's go down here that's 40 So now we have an area where we don't, where we can't use uh, any LEDs. Let me get this up here. So now we need to move the map as we like it. So I want to have uh, Pittsburgh here and I also want to have Massachusetts, uh, Boston and a little bit of Virginia Beach. You can also use your arrow keys on your keyboard. It makes it a little bit easier. So let's go. I think that's okay. We have a fairly large area here with uh, New York, New Jersey, uh, Washington, and Norfolk, and also Pittsburgh. And also a little bit of Canada here. And now we need to cut, cut the map to the correct size. It's also very easy. Go to the selection tool again. Select all. Then control Charlie. Then control D like Delta and control Victor. So now we have the map in the correct size. So you see there's no overhang here. Can control A, copy, and then we need to go to uh, Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so here are we in Adobe Illustrator and we need to create a new file here also. Go to File, New, and I already have a template here as well. If you don't have it, just use the same parameters here, 250 millimeters by 250 millimeters. For my American friends, that's uh, the same as 25 centimeters. And go to CMYK and high DPI, 300 DPI, uh, and then go to create. Here's the file we just created. Empty, of course, and then what I, would recommend to do is create layers for each step. So this is the layer that is created by default. Just rename it as a map. And then we copied uh, uh, the file from uh, Photoshop. Now we have to paste it inside here. Just go control Victor. And here it is. And we just need to align it here. And this looks good. And I would also suggest to get create the guides here. And it's best to create them on a new layer. We lock this layer. 
and then we go here and create a new one and we name this guides and then you have to go to view rulers show rulers and then you can just get them here it's a little bit easier just click on the guide and then you can place the position very easy by going to Y and then just 10, 10 millimeters and you drag this one out and then you go here 10 another one and that's 240 and this one is 40 And now we lock this one so they don't get moved around when we play with the map here. And then for all the airports, we need to create also a new layer. You don't have to, but it's easier later on. So now we have to select which airport we want to use. Also keep in mind, not all airports report a meter. Like for example, all the smaller ones, they normally start with a number. It's like the two golf nine or two golf four and whiskey two two. They normally don't report any meters. And you can check if it's reporting meters. If you go to aviationweather.gov, let me go to the main site. When you start, when you load the website, this is the start page and you go to meters here. And then you can Put in the name here, let's see W22. And as you can see, this one is not reporting any meters. And if you go back to the map, and we check, for example, uh, I don't know, FDK. It's important to add kilo. FDK and then you can see it's reporting meter so we can use this airport and depending on how many airports you want to use this can take up a little while you can also use for flight for this uh, if you have it but uh, aviationweather.gov works as well and also sometimes the data you see on um, for flight is they, they have their own data source and it's not the same as you get from aviationweather.gov and uh, software we use get the data all from here so you have to make sure it's uh, working inside here okay let's go back to the map and let's say you've uh, selected all the airports you want to use and now you have to mark them with um, a little circle you can create a circle here if it's showing a rectangle you just hold the left button and then you select the uh, ellipse tool and then while holding shift you create a perfect circle just create like whatever size you want you can change this later and then we need to change the color here so it's better visible i will use red here And we also need to change the size to two millimeters. Two by two. So and now you have to place it on all the airports you want to use. Like for example here. You can also use your arrow keys to be more precise. Then you don't have to create uh, a new circle every time. You can just uh, hold the Alt button and then go over the circle, click on the left uh, mouse button, and then you can just drag a new copy. So you can place the copy, let me zoom in, on the next airport. And you can go on and on like this. And 
I already did all of that and here is my all of my airports I want to use I also included a little legend here so later in the build you can see uh, which color is which um, weather and if you want to see how many uh, airports you got you can go to window uh, where is it document info just open up this uh, little window here and then you go to your layers where your airports are if you lock them unlock it here and then your selection tool scroll outside a little bit and then select everybody everything and you go here on to objects and you can see we have 163 um, circles or LEDs later in the build. Okay, and 163 minus the 5 from the legend, it's uh, 158. And that's how many airports you will see in the final product. Oh, in my final product. You don't have to use like all of the LEDs I use. You can just use like, I don't know, 5. The LEDs we are using in the build are in serial, so they need to be connected uh, like a chain. And for that, we need to create like a path, disable a map for a while, and zoom out. So you can see here the LEDs, and there's like no right or wrong way to connect them, just what feels normal for you, and I already also did that. And I created a new layer for that and call it way. And you can see it here. So I started with the legend and then I, let me zoom in a little bit. I just used, lose the, some lines here, it doesn't matter. It's just later easier to, uh, when you connect them on the PCB. And then I went over here and You can see the, the way I used. I went up like a circle and the last LED is this one. Uh, I imported the case I already designed. I will also include this in the link in the description so you can download it. You need to move this somewhere where this holes don't collide with any of the um, LEDs because uh, screws will go in here to uh, mount the case. So let's select all of that and then uh, this looks good. A little bit higher like this. So this is the power connector and this is the connector for the Raspberry Pi later. But this one will be mounted on the back side of the PCB. So it doesn't matter where, um, if there's some LEDs here or around here. So you could also mount it like this, as long as those holes don't collide with any LEDs. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is to write down all the names of the airports in the order you created uh, the string here. This comes in very handy so you don't have to go back and forth with uh, to the uh, Illustrator file. And I put all of them in to an Excel file. So we start here with, you can see VFR, M, VFR, IFR, low IFR and invalid. And then the first airport is uh, BKW. Let's zoom in a little bit here. You can see this is the first one. It's important to add the K in the front of each airport. And you need to go like this till you're finished. So in my case that's 165 minus 2, 163, like we had in the document info. 
uh, it's good to double check them because I did a map and didn't do that and had an error later on and it was a really pain in the ass to fix this afterwards. So double check all the names if they are in the correct order. And the last one is the RDG and that's also correct. Okay, so the next step is to export all the dots so we can use them later on in the circuit maker program. And for that, for some reason, circuit maker needs a border or like a line on each side. Otherwise the import doesn't scale very well. I don't know why that is, but you need to create a new layer. Let's uh, call it border. And I already did that, but I will do it again for you guys. And we go here again. And then you hold the left button till the menu pops up and then you go to rectangle tool. And then you go here on the edge. Oops. And then you create like a rectangle that's 200 by 50 millimeters by 250 millimeters and then you place it here and you can also reduce the stroke size if you go to properties stroke and then you can go uh, maybe go no, 0 0.01 that should do it Be sure that you are right on the edge here. Okay, so now we are finished with the map here and the next thing we need to do is to export this for uh, to use it in uh, circuit maker uh, I disabled the map so only the case the um, stand here and uh, LEDs and also the path is uh, visible here <coughs> sorry so you go to file export export as and then choose uh, PNG and then whatever name you want and then you go to export and then high resolution and uh, use the same uh, settings I have here background transparent and then OK And now we open Circuit Maker. Okay, so this is the new Circuit Maker. They just updated, uh, updated the version to 2.01. Uh, uh, I also don't have much experience with this version because they just uh, updated it like uh, two or three weeks ago. But first we need to create a new project. And you go File, New Project and then call it whatever you want I call it northeast map and hit create and now you have your project here on the side and first we need to create a schematics you go right click here and then add new to project Schematic, and you can say sheet or whatever you want. Let's 
So and here we have it. Because we use so many LEDs, you need to uh, expand the size to a one. Go there to tools, no project. Where is it? <laughs> Everything is different here. Uh, document options. Then this window opens up, and then you go to sheet size and go for A1. That should do it. So now we have a much bigger sheet here to work with. And now we need to add the parts. Okay, so you go to view and then go to libraries. And then this, let me see if I can put it in here. So this is my favorite library. I also put all the links to all the parts I will use down in the description below so you can just uh, add it to your favorites. And first we need the LED and this is the version I updated from the library available at Circuit Maker. I added like a little 3D model. Come on. And you just grab it here and place it here. The next thing we need is the is it this one. The Raspberry connector. Okay. And then we need uh, where is it? the converter chip here or the buffer chip. In this design, I will use two because uh, sometimes they are sold out at uh, GLC PCB. And if we put both on the um, design, we can choose which one is available right now at the uh, factory. And you don't have to design the whole board new. Okay, that's all the parts we need. And you see, that's a really simple circuit, but we need a lot of the LEDs, so it's a little bit uh, cumbersome. Let's get those out of the way. And zoom in a little bit here. So in my design, I use 100, uh, what was it, 63 um, LEDs. So we need to make 163 copies of this um, part and uh, also connect each of them together. So what I normally do is like I make a copy, maybe two or three copies. and then connect them first. Uh, let's get a little bit more space in here. Yeah. This is the wire, you connect uh, uh, ports with the wire together. So this is out and the out goes in the next in. Same here. And for the ground and for the power we use uh, labels. Uh, 
Yeah, the new version is a little buggy still. Come on. Okay, so I just closed the project and opened it again, and now it looks like it works. So after you put in the labels, just double click on it, and then you name this one ground, and this one is. VECC. And then you can just go here and drop down and choose the correct label. You can also highlight more than one and assign the label. And we need this one also ground and Move them a little bit here. Okay, that looks good. Come on. And now we need to copy this one again. Again, and again, and now we have to connect the copies together. So, and then you can copy this one again. It's still buggy. Tja, for some reason, Let's close this again. Okay. Copy and paste. And then you make just so as many copies as you need for your uh, map. And then don't forget to connect this one with the one above. It's the same, you go here and all the way up and inside here. So after that, you need to rename all the LEDs after the um, airports. So our first airport, our first LED is uh, we are and the next one is uh, marginal we and I and so on. And you need to do this for all the LEDs and also make sure that you don't skip because sometimes when you scroll you maybe skip one and then you instead of going for the tree here you put it in here and then you have to do everything all over again very annoying okay let's also hook up the other parts they're also really easy to do let's go down here
So this is the connector where we later put in the Raspberry Pi. That's, uh, we connect it like here's the connector and then we put it like this. So this one is here and this one is the same. That's power, 5 volt. I have a little cheat sheet here. That's ground. So this one will go into the chips or into the buffer here. And we have another ground. Let's go for the label first. That's one here, one here, and one here. And then we go to here. And here and down here. Those. Our ground. This one is VCC. And this one we will label A and uh, one A. So that's it what we need to do on the Raspberry connector because we only use like uh, power in, ground and uh, signal out here, that's uh, 1A. Next we connect those here. So we are in the final uh, PCB, we only use like one of those. They are, they are in parallel now. So whatever part uh, is available at uh, GLC PCB, we will use. And this one is a little bit smaller footprint. So if they have this, we will prefer the smaller one over this one. So let's get some wires here. And ground down here. So this one, this one, this one. I'll arc around. Oops. And this one and this one. It's VCC. And this one is one Y. This one as well. And let's save this real quick. And I forgot one part, and it's the power connector. That's this one here. And we also need two labels. And this one is VCC. And this one is Ground. Let's 
So you can see if you connect the Raspberry Pi here, then the signal to control the LEDs goes out here and it comes out as 3.3 uh, volts and then it goes in here and the chip converts it to 5 volt because the LEDs only can uh, work with 5 volts and then the signal comes out here as a 5 volt signal and it's the same chip. And now we need to connect the one Y to the beginning of the chain and that's here. So we need a little bit of wire here. And then we go for the net label. And this one is one Y. So that's all you need on like parts and let me just finish this and get back to you when I'm done with all the LEDs. Okay, so I finished all the LEDs and even if I told you before to be cautious, I already did an error here and I had to uh, put in this LED like this because I forgot to put it in the first place. Um, so be extra cautious. And I also added some uh, mounting holes. We will need this later in the build to create holes in the PCB to mount like um, the casing and also the stand and uh, some other stuff. And last but not least, uh, I put also two single pads in here. Uh, one in and one out if you want to hook up like multiple um, maps together you have like one out that you can feed into the other um, PCB and one in if you if this one is the last one in the chain uh, maybe you will never use it but it's good to have it okay now the fun part we create a PCB and for that we go back here and we click right click here and then go add new to project PCB that will take maybe a while you can also rename this to north east map Okay, and here's our PCB. So first we need to move this a little bit more to the center here because you can build anything below here for some reason. Um, we go here, move board shape, something like here. Then you go to set origin zoom in a little bit something like here and then we need to change this to metric and grid size is one millimeter and then we need to change the PCB size to 25 by 25 centimeter or 250 by 250 millimeter and you can do this also here, edit board shape. And now you can change the size here. And down here, you see how far away it's from this um, point of origin. So we need to go here to 20, 250 millimeters. And same here, it's minus 150. And that's it, just click somewhere outside of the PCB to lock it in. And here you have it. That's your 250 by 250 millimeter PCB. 
And now we need to import all the parts from the schematics to the PCB. First, let me save this here real quick. And to do that, we go to project, import changes. And then you see all the parts and then you go validate changes. And then execute changes. And then close. And here you can see all the little parts, the LEDs, the holes, the ICs, the connector, and um, the power connector also. Uh, next we need to do is to import the PNG file we created in Adobe Illustrator. And to do that we go to Graphic. And then it shows a, like a crosshair and then we zoom in here and we place it here on the origin point. Zoom out a little bit. And click here. Now I open up the file manager and you can select the PNG file you created uh, before that will be this one and now you can see the file like a preview file you can leave everything as is and just click OK Okay, that was wrong. We need to place this in another layer. And now this is a top layer and that's not what we want. You can select everything and delete it. So in the new version, there's no mechanical layer uh, created by default like in the last one. So we need to do it ourselves. And you just go right click here and options mechanical layers then it opens up this little window here and then go right click here add mechanical layer you can name it like um, helper or whatever you want to name it then click OK and now we have a mechanical layer called helper you can close this window again and here's the layer so make sure this layer is selected when you uh, import the picture so again go to graphics zoom in and then snap directly onto the original point zoom out and snap directly to the endpoint here select your png file and now it looks better everything looks good just click ok zoom out and there you have it like each dot rep rep it represents um, a LED and all the other parts are also here so we can place the power connector here and also the uh, raspberry connector here okay and now the fun part begins we need to place all the LEDs on the exact uh, point where they need to be and 
The first one is uh, VFR, like in our list. And let's try to find it. If you can't find it like here, because there's so many parts, you can just type in here VFR. Then it shows you what it finds. If you click here, it will jump back to the schematics. And if you click here, it will show you the part here on the PCB layout. And here it is. You can take it and place it just roughly where it needs to be. So now you need to reset the search here and every part is going active again. You can also find the next part. You can see like it shows you where it is connected. So if you move it around, you can see that it goes up here up here and this is not the right part that's in and if you follow this line here it should show you the marginal VFR and if you move this around you can see it goes to IFR And here it goes to low IFR and invalid. The next one is this. And the next one would be my list. Next one is L B uh, L W B. This one, and so on. Let's zoom in a little bit. So if you see in really close, you can see which uh, pad is connected to where, and this is ground, and this is uh, power, and this is uh, one wire. This will go to the chip. So let's see how we best position this one. We also change the snap grid here to 0 0.0 millimeter. So we have a little bit more uh, detail and it doesn't snap too much. And if you want to rotate the part, you left click on the part and then you hit the space bar and it rotates it by 90 degrees every time you hit space. As you can see, let me zoom in a little bit and move this a little bit up here. This pad is connected to this pad. So the best thing is to do to have this pad in this direction. So let's re rotate this like this. and rotate this like this. So make sure that dot here is in the center of the circle same here if you have like two objects over each other and you click on it it will show a selection and uh, you can choose which one you want to um, uh, work with and in this case you want to go with the LED and now you can move the LED And same goes for here, we need to rotate this. And place it in the center here. Same here. And 
Same goes for here. So this is the first step we need to do. We need to place all the parts where they need to be, like most of the LEDs the, and these two parts, like the connector and the power connector. And later also the holes for the for the stand here and for the casing holes here. So let me finish this real quick and I will get back to you when I positioned all the LEDs on the correct um, order. Okay, and here is the finished, or uh, not really finished, but uh, I finished all the placement of the parts. So you can see every LED is on this right place. I also place all the holes. They need to be in a specific place. And I will also put the uh, right coordinates for the holes in the description below. Also, it's important to place the uh, Raspberry connector and the power connector on the back of the uh, PCB. You can do that by, let me get the inspector here. Select the part. then properties and this is the bottom layer you can see that the text is now mirrored and this is also an indication that it's on the back of the PCB you also need to rotate maybe the connector so that uh, pin uh, one is on top here and not like here that's also important same goes with the power connector this needs to be on the bottom layer. Everything else, every other part uh, goes on the top layer. And you can see that uh, text on the top layer is normal. On the bottom layer, it's uh, mirrored. Okay, now we need to connect all the LEDs electronically because right now we just place them on the PCB, but they are not connected in any way. So we will use the top of the PCB as plus or VDD and the bottom of the PCB is our ground layer. So we only have to connect the signal from one uh, LED to the other and um, ground and uh, voltage will be connected directly to the polygon pool. I will get in more details what that is later. Okay, now let's start connecting all the LEDs to each other. So zoom in a little bit. And you can see here, like the lines, um, Circuit Maker shows you where you need to connect the lines. And then you go to, um, where is it? Route. And then you will get like this crosshair. And you click here. And you can see it will create a connection. Now we connected the first LED with the second one. And now the next one. Click here. And here. And now this is a little bit longer. You can click here, zoom out a little bit. And connect it here. And we connect this one to the next one. As you can see, it's important to place or rotate the LEDs when you place them. So it's very easy to connect them to each other. And 
and then we click here and here and so on and you need to do this for all the LEDs on your board and this can take some while so let me finish this up and get back to you when I'm done with it okay and I'm back and I connected all the LEDs to each other let's zoom out a little bit you want to get a, a clearer image from the board you can also disable all the other layers you go to view and then you go to where is it single layer mode you know you can switch here on the bottom which layer you want to see like this is the mesh uh, two layer where we put in the png from illustrator to see where we need to place the leds but if you only want to see the top layer you can just activate the top layer and you can only see the connection we made so in, in this view we can um, also correct some errors we may made or some not so nice connection like this one so it would be uh, would make uh, much more sense to make this a straight line you should just grab this one and just correct it like this and then you can go over every connection just real quick here let me find another one for example this i don't like it when they go out on the side so i will just change it that will it go out in the middle like this or here just place it directly in the middle like this same here it's not necessary but I think it just looks better so and when you finish with this we also need to connect the other parts and let me switch back to all um, layers here that's view now you can see all the layers again so what we have to connect also it's like you don't have to worry about the VDD and the ground it will be connected automatically later I will show you that at the Raspberry connector we only need to connect uh, 1A to the chip and that's the same process you just go to route and then go to where is it here and you can also route between pins so that's that and then we need to connect the second as well Let's go from here something like that and then we need to connect the one Y to the start of our LED chain like this and of course also this one you can also route inside of the chip like this and let's get this to an angle here and we also need to get this um, pin connected to this chain here and we can do that with this here 
because this is all one connection. <laughs>